what pieces should be also put in place then for domestic violence, as you've done your work in that committee? And, well, you know, um, it's a very controversial field, as you know, the whole the use of mediation in cases involving domestic abuse. Still? St oh, still, but less so. Um, uh -huh. um, you know, back when we, when AFCC first got involved and mm -hmm. served as the convener for mm -hmm. several symposiums on this topic, um, um, it became very clear that there, this was becoming a very positional debate. And, uh, between? Bet well, primarily between the people who were working in the domestic violence field, you know, the, mm -hmm. the people who were working in the shelters and advocates against domestic abuse were becoming uh, quite uh, vocal about mm -hmm. their position that mediation should never be used in cases involving domestic abuse. And because why, in their view? Well, because, you uh, because of their concerns about um, disempowerment and safety issues and that a, a woman or a victim um, would not be able to effectively participate in the mediation process just because of the dynamics of the abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, on the, on the other side of that um, debate were people who were, who were working in the court system and who were providing mediation services and felt that, uh, that there really was some, some benefit to be able to have that as a choice for people and that taking away choices from victims, saying, saying to, for example, a wife, um, an abuse victim, you're not entitled to mediate, and we're going to take that option away from you. The very nature of doing that simply replicates the same dynamics of the abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Taking away choices mm -hmm. replicates the dynamics of the abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And so this became more and more of the, you know, the positional argument, and as good mediators, we know that uh, you know, positional uh, negotiations are not very effective, and we tend to talk about interest-based negotiations, and so AFCC, and uh, this was, you know, part of, um, you know, sort of part of my agenda, was able to serve as the convener for several symposiums, and we brought together all the stakeholders. We brought together the various different interest groups, mm -hmm. including the shelter people, the advocates, the court-connected mediators, uh, others in the field of mediation. Uh, academics and like good mediators we tried to surface the issues and look at you know what's what are the concerns behind these positions and, uh, and I think today we've we've begun to see that uh, um, the the mediation field has become much more sensitive to to perhaps the model of mediation needs to be a bit more of a hybrid mediation model to address the kinds of concerns of of manipulation and vulnerabilities and safety. And the advocacy world, I think, has become um, uh, a bit more embracing of the use mm -hmm. of mediation mm -hmm. in, uh, in serving their clientele, mm -hmm. realizing that the court system may not be a forum that mm -hmm. best addresses their clients' uh, needs. Mm -hmm. And again, taking away choices uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, is not a good thing.